Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Conley with Scratch Golf Tips. Today we're going to be talking about the concept of breaking 80. Breaking 80 is a bucket lister for so many golfers. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that you can do and actively think of and practice that will make breaking 80 a lot less hard for you. Now, I know that on my own golf journey, breaking 80 was a huge milestone that I wanted to hit. And the first time that I broke 80, I was ecstatic. It felt great. And then the dominoes kept falling after that. My first time breaking 80, I think the next two rounds, I also broke 80. And then I really hit a nice stride in golf. So I'm gonna talk about what I did personally. And then we're gonna talk about some other things and some misconceptions that a lot of people think about. I need to do X, Y, and Z to break 80 when it's actually quite the opposite. So for my own journey to breaking 80, I can look at two specific things that turned breaking 80 to something that was super difficult and frustrating into very attainable and eventually breaking 80. The first thing that I worked on a lot that was pivotal in helping me break 80 was finding a consistent shot shape. Now, when I say a consistent shot shape, I'm referring to my approach shots most specifically, where I was able to hit a very high controlled fade into most uh, into most greens that I was approaching, I was also able to hit a fairly consistent draw. This allowed me to really dial in my alignment and have options to work the ball into the greens both ways. Having that ability to work the ball in both ways is also so important for different uh, pin positions, playing into different winds, playing from different parts of the fairway, getting around trees. It's such a pivotal part of the game to manage and, and move around a golf course to be able to move the ball both left and right and right to left and do so on command and in a controlled way. And those are the two keys, being able to do it on command and in a controlled way. It, before this, I could hook a golf ball. I could move the ball right to left and I could move the ball left to right, but I could not do it in a controlled way. I would be hitting these big old hooks. I couldn't hit that baby draw that we always see on television and it's such a pretty ball flight. But after spending a lot of time on the range, recording my swing and uh, making the tic-tac-toe grid on the range and being able to hit a high draw, high fade, uh, low draw, low fade, that was really uh, very crucial for me to dial in these shots. It did take a lot of time on the range, a lot of time with the seven iron on my hand, callousing up those hands, but you get a nice feel about your wrist, about your, your move through transition impact. It helped so much. And that was one of the main keys in doing so, in, in breaking 80. Another aspect that was very important in breaking 80 was for me to fully understand golf course management and how I should be attacking and approaching golf holes. Golf course management boils down to the club selection that you have, being able to read wind, being able to read greens, knowing, hey, this is a very narrow hole, maybe I shouldn't hit driver, let me go back and hit a three iron off the tee. That just comes with time, it can be taught, but just understanding your game and understanding what shots that you are most uh, confident in that you can execute under pressure, having those abilities comes with just playing a decent amount of golf on a course. Um, I will also say that recording your shots and writing down what clubs you're hitting, some people have a pretty photographic memory with that stuff. If I'm playing a course I know well, I remember all the golf shots I hit. So being able to look back on that or writing down the notes and looking back on the notes will help you say, well, hey, I hit driver eight times, I hit three wood uh, six times, I hit all my fairways with the three wood, and I only hit 50% with the driver. Having that ability to think both qualitatively and quantitatively on your golf game is very important for your course management. Now, those are two quick things that helped me personally become a golfer who could consistently break 80, but there are a few things that are very generalized that can help anyone who really finds breaking 80 difficult a lot more easy. I think the number one barrier that keeps most people away from breaking 80 is the mentality that they have going into it. Many people who try, are trying to break 80 are thinking, every par five, I need to attack. I need to make a birdie. The, oh, that's a short par four. Let me take out my driver. Let me make a birdie. Maybe I can sneak an eagle out of a par five. That is not the way that you should be approaching a round in which you can break 80. You'd be surprised, and I've played golf with a lot of very gifted golfers. Um, they don't make a ton of birdies. On the PGA Tour, yes, they make a ton of birdies. If you see a one or two handicap who's regularly shooting in the mid 70s, they're not out there making six birdies around. Some are, maybe you have a great round and you make six birdies. But the real key 
in, in shooting those low scores, and a huge key in breaking 80 is avoiding doubles and more. You're going to make bogeys. You might even make one double, but when you're making triple bogeys or you're making three double bogeys on a front nine, that's going to completely wipe out your score. So understanding that bogeys are fine, and if you're gonna break 80, you can't make a ton of bogeys. If you're playing on a standard par 72 course, you can only make seven mistakes. You can only make seven bogeys. But if you're making one triple and maybe one double, now you only have two mistakes left. You make two bogeys, okay, now you need to make a par every single hole. And that puts a lot of pressure on you. So being able to really eradicate anything above a bogey, or excuse me, a double bogey, keeping, you know, taking your medicine, if you hit a horrible tee shot, play for bogey. Don't play for the hero shot. Don't try and hit a 250 yard three wood slice into a hole. Take your medicine, take your bogey, move on to the next hole, and then the pars will start ringing off. So that's a huge key from the mental standpoint. And for anyone looking to practice a particular part of your game, so many people think, oh, if I need to break 80, I need to hit some nice long drives. I need to hit it 300 down the fairway, or I need to be hitting my irons to eight feet. I need to dial in those. Uh, no. The number one thing that you should be practicing is getting up and down around the greens. Because if you're playing 18 holes of golf, you're not gonna hit every green and rack. You're gonna put yourself in some tough situations around the green and stepping up to those thinking, well, I'll hit a chip to 30 feet, I'll two putt, maybe three putt, bogey or double. You, you can't be playing that way. You can't have that mentality when you're trying to do something as difficult as breaking 80. If you're in the fairway, uh, say 20 yards from the pin, you need to be making par there. Now, if you're in that position five times in a round, you, you're probably not gonna go five for five, but you need to be dialing in around the greens. Your putting needs to be great. You need to be a good lag putter. Breaking 80 is not easy. The, the high, high majority of golfers, even golfers who play their entire life, they won't break 80. Shooting in the 70s is difficult. So you need to be willing to put in practice to gain confidence and to gain the ability to hit different shots around the green from rough, from greenside bunkers, from the fairway, from tight lies, from thick lies, whatever it is, take some time around the greens. Uh, the good news is uh, I find practicing short game very fun. Just head over to a green, or if you have a putting mat, you can work on your putting at, from the comfort of your own house. Just throw some balls down, give yourself different lies, uphill, downhill, thick, uh, thick rough, uh, thin lies on the fairway. Try it all, try it all, and be confident in your ability to practice and prepare yourself on the golf course. So across the board, we went over four different things. Uh, for myself personally, we went over shot shaping and course management. And then as a general, that can help everyone else out. We're talking about mentality and we touched upon the importance of practicing your short game. Those are the four main keys that I could sum up that have helped me and that I've seen help many other golfers. If you have some different keys or if you have any questions about things that I've mentioned in this video, I'd love for you to let me know. Leave in the comment section below. I read and respond to all comments. If you found this video helpful and you enjoyed the content put forth, please leave a like rating on the video. That helps us for two reasons. One, it shows me that you're enjoying this type of content, which helps me cater this type of content to more people who will find it helpful. It also helps YouTube understand that people are enjoying it and it will show this kind of content to more people. If you'd like to see more content like this or an assortment of different golf and golf instruction related content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also watch all of our previous postings. We have a bunch of other videos from every topic across golf on the channel already existing. Thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.